Greetings comrades, Soviet Gaming here. Today I'll be talking about EP in our Kingdom 2. We will cover all the options to increase your EP starting with the easiest one and uh, progressing to the hardest ones. And I think pay to win guys might use this guide as well because they just make it more efficient and faster. So it will be useful for everyone. But before we start, if you like mobile games, please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button to see all the new videos and like the video. So basically, as your character will level, you will unlock different mechanics that will boost your EP by a lot or not that much. I'm level 64 right now, so it will take a while before the next mechanic will unlock, but we'll talk about everything that's available right now and as far as I know, we have the most stuff available already. Let's go over each of those options. First, let's go to the skills. This topic is really interesting because you can increase your EP a lot here, but it will harm your actual power. So what I did here, I focused on 5 skills that I will use, I decided to go for the damage build, but I might change to the tank build later, it will cost me a lot of gold, so you want to actually figure out what you want to do. Figure out the build that you want to have, figure out the skills that you want to have, and level them up. Each level up give you character base stats that will actually add you EP because they are actually adding you the statistics. So you can focus on the skills that you use a lot like I did and uh, level them up mostly and don't spend your skill books on anything else but then you'll have lower EP because you won't get those cheap uh, stats that are available for the skills that you don't use. But on the other hand, when you level the skills, you're increasing the damage that you do with those skills. So in the long run, I think this is a better strategy. You will be stronger, but you will have lower EP. But what matters for you is that you should be effective. Of course, if you want to have a lot of EP or you don't know what you will do, you can invest in all those skills a little bit. Just level them up to blue, then to green, like one after another. And uh, that way you'll get a little bit more EP easier. Because as you increase the rarity of your skill, it costs more skill books to increase. So the white ones cost one skill book, the blue ones cost two, and the green one cost three, and so on. So the higher you are, the more expensive it is to level up your skills. That's why you can invest those 50 books that you get daily in the white skill and get a lot of stat bonuses, but your skills will be weaker because you won't be using them. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. You heard my advice. Do whatever you think is best for you. And keep in mind that this is my personal opinion, so if you don't agree with that, you can write in the comments and we can discuss it. Next one goes emblems. Emblems are unlocked later in the game. Basically what you do in the emblems, you unlock one emblem after another, wherever you want, using the runes and the gold. And when you unlock the full set, you will get the bonus over here that will give you major EP and stat boost. Small advice over here, I would suggest going for the ones with a higher success rate, so you can unlock tables earlier. Moreover, the higher the tier, the more is the group effect of the same level of emblems, so it's beneficial to unlock the higher tiers before going for the lowest ones. But in the end, you will unlock them all and uh, you will have those boosts available for you. Next one is titles. I know that you guys are thinking like, what titles? Titles are just for lulz. No, it's not. When you have the title that has that fist icon on it, you know that it will give you some stats and they are being unlocked in different ways, either by progressing the campaign or by doing the achievements and so on. So uh, you just want to unlock them. You don't have to equip them when you have it available. It's already adding you stats, so it doesn't matter which title do you wear, you will have bonuses from all your unlocked titles. And also you can click here on the right to see the bonuses of all your titles that you have unlocked. And as you can see, they add a lot of statistics to you. That's a quite significant boost. So make sure to work on your titles at least a little bit. Next one is talent, but talent actually doesn't give you any EP, it's just boosting your skills. So um, this is for the class builds mostly. You don't really get EP for the talent, so we'll skip that for now. Let's go to the costumes. In the costumes, it's really important to wear the costume that give you stat boost. You can just you can just click and hold on the item and you will see what does it do. So, for example, this respirator mask will give higher EP boost than this uh, plus 4% mask. So, if we'll switch it, bam, we're getting additional 1.6k power. But since I'm farming now, this is better for me. So, uh, just keep in mind that if you want that... EP up, you can actually go for the stuff that you don't need right now, but that will give you higher EP to get those milestones, guys. Right now, at my level, 4% equals to 734 EP. Not that much, but it adds up, and the higher your basic stats, the higher the bonus will be, so it's like a multiplier. Pretty nice. As far as I know, you can get that bonus from the mask, head, and the chest piece, 
not for the wings. The chest is really interesting because uh, in order to get it, you gotta either get it in the gacha, in the costume gacha, or you can buy it for 1.5k diamonds. You can go to the mall, you can go to the custom and mounts, you can put chase now and go for body. So you can get this tiger mercenary armor that will give you 8% bonus stats, which is almost like 1.5k EP. So I don't know if it's worth it or not, it's up to you. I didn't get it, I'm waiting for the gacha and I hope that it will give me that costume right now. All the costumes have the same stats, so chest give 8%, hat and mask gives 4% each. So it doesn't matter if it's this one or any other costume that give you stats. All of those will give the same boost, so I would rather use those diamonds for something different. For what? I'll talk about it a bit later. Next one is mount. The mount mechanics in this game is a little bit complicated, so we'll make a, another guide for that. But for now, I just want to say that you can upgrade those reins, and uh, they will carry over from one mount to another. So investing in rain polisher and upgrading it will work and will give you boost that will last as long as you have it, but you can have different mounts and when you change them, their stat bonuses don't apply, so you only have bonuses from the mount that you have available. Next one is wings, let's go over them. So the wing mechanics is pretty simple, you just fortify them using the core shards and the gold, unlocking each rank and that will give you the bonus stat percentage boost, that's pretty easy. And then you can inlay gems, those are different from the item gems, so this is a separate type of gems and those give you quite a good stat bonuses as well because for example equipping this level 7 uh, gem will give us about 7 or 8 actually 8.8 k ep so that's a huge boost if you get lucky with those gems you will get a significant boost in power so it's up to rng mostly you can also upgrade them but it's kind of expensive it will cost 10k gold each so i don't know if you want to go for it or not up to you um, I personally would advise waiting for the proper pool because leveling up from level 1 to like level 7 will take a lot of gold. Let's go to the next category, to the inventory. This is like one of the main ways to upgrade your EP. First of all, real important stuff that I always forget, click over here on the crown thingy, on the EP title and claim your next EP title when you can, it will give you a small boost in stats and will also increase the amount of money you are being rewarded every day. So that's really nice to have. Other than that, in the inventory screen you can access costumes, we talked about that already. So what I would advise, it depends if you want to get the instant boost in EP or you want to play long term. I'm always playing long term, so I'm doing the most efficient way. So first I'll talk about the short term boost. We have those green boots over here and I had a copy of those in the inventory back in the day, so I could just rank them up, spend a lot of money and get those 45 additional evasion, which is not that much, but it will give you boost right now. But in the long term, that is not really viable. So I leveled up my weapon a little bit because I really need damage. More about that a little bit later. But you really don't want to rank up green items that much because you can get orange version of those. And you don't want to rank orange things too much as well before you'll reach like level... Uh, I don't know, 65, 70, because at the early levels you will get access to the new equipment really fast and you'll change the stuff that you have really quickly, so um, you'll just waste a lot of resources on that that you don't really need. Go for the most powerful items you can get, those are orange right now for me, and you can rank them up to level 2 or 3 right now at level 64, because other than that, I think we'll get new items pretty soon and we'll have to replace those anyway, and you will spend a lot of resources. If you want to know how to get those accessories or how to craft items, I have the special guide for that. The link will be up there in the cards, you can watch over there. And if you want that uh, trophy thing, it's being rewarded in the Territory Wars, the link is in the cards as well. Or just check the playlist that I have for the Our Kingdom 2 for more guides. Next option is fusing, well this is basically the crafting of the items. As I said, you wanna go for the highest rarity, highest level equipment that you have available. At the beginning of the game, you can craft the blue and the green stuff just to fill the slot, just to have the access to that upgrading mechanics. But don't really focus on those items. You want to go for the orange ones because they are way more powerful than the green ones and they are not really hard to get. Fortifying is really important for your EP. Again, here we can be effective or we can go for EP. If you want to be effective, you want to level up your weapon and your bracers for as much attack as possible because going for the high attack is really cool you can kill mobs really really fast 
and it will increase your grinding AFK speed. But if you want to be effective in the PvP and overall useful, you want to level other gear items a little bit, so don't forget to fortify them as well and keep them at some appropriate level. All those fortify levels will stay on the slot, so if you're changing the item, it's not supposed to change, it will stay here forever and you will never lose it. Next one is inlay. This is really important for EP. This is one of the ways how you can increase your EP a lot, because those gems, they give you so much EP. So, for example, equipping that level 8 gem gave us a huge boost of EP, 5k per gem, and you can have so many of those in all your items. Just make sure that you have at least one, any kind of item available for you at that slot, and then you can fit in all the different gems that you have available. So, yeah, if you're lucky, if you got the really good high level gems, you will boost your EP a lot. That's really, really powerful, guys. You really want to focus on the gems for EP. Let's talk about that in a minute as well. And the last equipment option is ranking up. Basically, I told about it already. You want to rank up your orange items or your weapon up to maybe rank 1 or 2 or maybe 3 if you are further than me, if you are like level 70 or so, because the further you are, the slower it is for you to get the items and at the early stages it's changing way too fast and you'll waste the resources because ranking up at the higher ranks is extremely expensive and you will waste a lot of resources now let's talk a little bit about book of ramayan as promised here it is so this is a really good way of increasing your ep as you see i just was farming those cows for maybe a i don't know hour and i got 72 ep for that and i increased my attack a little bit so what you want to do you want to go at the low level areas, areas where you can one shot the enemies, areas where you can two shot the enemies and take them out over there and increase your stats over here. I would strongly suggest focusing on attack, again because it will increase your killing rate in other areas. So for example, I want to go to Mount Fertile at my level 65, it will be really easy. And I want to go for evil skeletons because they give attack and I haven't leveled them up yet. And before we start killing them, you want to change your skills a little bit. Basically, I will remove all the skills that don't increase my movement speed. Basically, this is only the dragon charge, the only one that I have available because it will move me forward and put on auto. This way, I can kill them with a normal attack, which is way faster than using the skill. So I will have the higher kill ratio with this tip. Look at this, they are going down like flies, and since you're one-shotting them, even with a normal attack, you will be way faster at killing them, you will get those pieces faster. Also, experiment a little bit with the target range, you can put it on a limited, that will increase your farming speed, but it might drive you away from your actual farming area into some different area where the enemies are. If you're aiming for specific stat, like for attack, you want to have that radius enabled so you won't run away from the farming area to some different monster area and stuck there. So from my personal experience, I will tell you this, at the early levels, you want to farm the low level areas because the enemies there are so much easier to kill and you'll have to do that anyway to get the stat bonuses. And for one night today, for 8 hours of farming, I've got about 1000 EP just from the book. So it's really, really cool. You can get all those stats, you can get stronger and that's really useful. Okay, now we're moving on to Eidolons, finally! Wow, this guide will take a while. So Eidolons, again, there is a fast option and there is a long-term option. The fast option is getting one of your Eidolons that got to the three stars and invest a lot in their equipment, just max it out as much as you can, put everything here and increase their um, affinity. That way you'll get the higher percentage boost on their stats and they will have higher stats because of equipment and so on and so on. But in the long run you might not use that specific Eidolon, so I'm actually slowly increasing their stats, but I'm really focused on the SSR ones, which I will use later in the game. So I'm waiting for them to reach the 2 or 3 star ratio so I can evolve them and then I'll invest a lot in them. Right now it costs me a little bit of EP, but in the long term it will be better because you will get not just EP from the passive guys, but you'll get those guys available for you all the time and you'll want them to be strong. Moreover, you want to level all your Eidolons. You want to level them all to, let's say, level 40 at the very beginning because that will give you achievement as well and uh, higher and higher because that will give you stats as well. Let's see, let's fortify this level 36 one with, uh, let's say, 50 of those dust, 40. And there we go, we are getting 69 EP for that, that's not that much, but we're getting achievements as well. Achievements are important, I'll talk about that in this video as well. 
Actually, going for the SR ones is a good idea as well, specifically for free-to-play players, because it will, it will, it might take a while before you get SSR ones to the proper level, and uh, they will still give you that one percent of their stats, so it won't be wasted resources anyway. We are moving to achievements, guys. First of all, the actual achievement score is really important because. Difference from rank 9 to rank 10 achievements, for example, is giving you about 200 attack, about 50 crit, about what, uh, 1.5k HP, 100 defense and uh, 100 evasion. That's a lot of stat that will make you so much more powerful. So grinding achievements is really important. Moreover, that gives you gems that you can use for the pools. Moreover, some of the achievements give you titles. Titles that give you... AP as well, so some titles aren't just for the lulz, some of those are really effective, some of those are giving you the actual bonuses. So yeah, I, I can tell you for sure that all the quests over here in the NPC screen of the map that involves talking to everyone in the area, when you finish them all, you'll get achievements for finishing the area and that give you a small EP boost as well. So you really want to do that. Anyway, you want to do all of those easter eggs and uh, talking dialogues because that give you diamonds as well, that give you achievements points and that will be useful in the long run anyway. Okay guys, we have one more mechanic that isn't available for me yet, this is the spouse. So when you wait in someone, you will get that wedding ring, that is not just for your convenience, it will also give you stats. How much? I don't know, but it will definitely give you some EP boost. I heard about 200-300 EP per level and the level has been increased by gifting each other the gifts, so it might be a good option. But more on that later when I'll find the proper wife for myself and make a video about wedding. Oh guys, it's so hard to find a wife, you can't even imagine. And let's talk a little bit about the gacha. Should I go for Adelans or should I go for gems? This is the question that we all asked ourselves and I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you this, you can go for Adelans for like 5 pulls. After that, that's not really efficient, you can get a really minor boost because when you start up your Adelans and if those aren't the ones that you will use for a long time, you won't get that significant boost because the level cap is way higher than yours. So yeah, going for gems in the early game is way better because those as you have so, give you significant boost of EP. None of the Adelans right now will be able to give you 6k EP boost. So yeah, I would suggest mostly going for the gem gachas. I was going for Adelans because I like waifus, I want to have them all really leveled up, available, running around, killing enemies, but that what made me weaker. As you can see, my power is way lower than it could be and I'm actually rank 156 already. After a few days of playing I was below 1000 so I'm progressing. I'm doing the right thing I guess. Oh yeah, considering the pool advice for the pay to win guys, for the guys who use real money, you want to make use of those events that guarantee you to get SSR, that guarantee you to get the higher stuff. So if you're doing the pools and you're thinking like, hmm, should I go for diamonds or should I go for Adelans? You should really make use of those events that give you guaranteed stuff. That is really nice, because my last 5 pulls of Adelans got me only grey and SR ones, so yeah, no SSR ladies so far. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this EP guide, if you have your own ideas, your advices, share them in the comments with the community. Also let me know what you think about my guide, while you're going there don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and make sure that you have all the notifications turned to all, it's really important, otherwise you might miss something. Also, I would really appreciate if you would join me on Twitch, I'm streaming every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday and join our fantastic community on the Discord, we can talk over there, all the links will be over here, also there are social links over there, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, join wherever you want or everything, I would really appreciate that. That's about it for now guys, thank you for watching, Soviet out, see ya comrades, bye.